Good evening. Thank you so much for being here, uh, braving the wind and the storm. Uh, just uh, one very brief announcement. Uh, there are no, if you're looking for service leaflets, there, are, there aren't any. Um, it's too dark for you to read <laughs> um, uh, a service leaflet. Um, the, but the mass is the same as you would f uh, have on a Sunday, uh, so no surprises. The only uh, difference is uh, all the beautiful candles uh, at the altar. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. God, 
unto whom all hearts are open, all desire to know, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. <coughs> Father in heaven, by whose grace the Virgin Mother, thine incarnate Son, was blessed in bearing him, but still more blessed in keeping thy word. Grant us to honor the exaltation of our lowliness, to follow the example of our devotion to thy will. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol and high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. The word of the Lord.
Be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to thee, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. One of the most distinctive Anglo-Catholic practices that we observe here at St. Mary's is our devotion to the Virgin Mary. While many Episcopal churches may have some vague, occasional references to Mary in their prayers and worship, we Anglo-Catholics express your devotion to Our Lady explicitly and regularly. We ask the Holy Mother to pray for us and to intercede for us. At St. Mary's, our Marian prayers and hymns form a part of our weekly Sunday worship as well as our daily Masses. And this evening, we offer the Rorate Mass in honor of the Blessed Virgin. I remember the first time that I encountered this practice of venerating Mary in an Episcopal church. About 17 years ago, I was visiting the Church of the Advent in Boston, an Anglo-Catholic parish like ours. At the end of the solemn high mass, we pray the Angelus, one of the traditional Marian prayers. My Protestant sensibility at the time was assaulted and shaken up. I had thought that Marian devotion was one of the hard and fast boundaries between Roman Catholics and Protestants. And here we were in an Episcopal church, technically Protestant, offering up prayers to the Virgin Mary. I could just see John Calvin and John Knox turning over in their graves. Well, I've come a long way since then. Not only did I end up joining Church of the Advent, now I am serving at a parish whose patroness is St. Mary and where we pray to Mary all the time. Moreover, the prayers to Our Lady have become integral to my private devotions, not just corporate worship. The incorporation of Marian prayers in my spiritual life has developed gradually over time and is still evolving. But there have also been a few significant personal experiences that have drawn me closer to Mary. The first is the movie, The Passion of the Christ, Mel Gibson's film. The film, as you may have heard, is fraught with all sorts of problems and is not my cup of tea. If you're interested in a really good Jesus film, I would recommend Pier Paolo Pasolini's The Gospel According to St. Matthew. Never mind the fact that the director Pasolini was an atheist and Marxist, I think he made the most beautiful film about our Lord. But I digress. To return to the Passion of the Christ, what was most striking in the film for me was a scene of Mary as she stood watching her son Jesus carry the cross to Golgotha. The excruciating expression on her face revealed a profound sorrow and horror of seeing her son in pain and walking toward death. Such pathos. Is there in this world than to see a loved one suffer and die? Several years after watching the film, I found myself in a hospice room, keeping watch my, with my family at my father's deathbed. My thoughts turned to Mary. She had personally experienced what I was going through at the time, the agony of witnessing the suffering and death of a loved one. In that darkest moment of my life, my prayers went up to Our Lady for compassion and solace. I had the same experience again of finding consolation in Mary when my mother died three years later. And incidentally, my mother died on December 15th, um, which is today, uh, nine years ago. For those of us who have lost loved ones this time of the year, this season will never be the same. While the whole world seems to be caught up in the spirit of the holidays, we grieve anew our loss the painful absence in our lives, the darkness that descends into our souls. In this season of Advent, as we wait for the coming of our Lord, we are all surrounded by darkness in some way. Not only has the world become physically darker with shorter days and longer nights 
in this gray, gloomy winter season. We also struggle with the various dark corners in our lives. Grief over the loss of a loved one, a broken relationship, an illness, financial worries, loneliness. In the words of the Salva Regina, one of the Marian prayers, we live in a valley of tears. But we need, not, we need not despair. We have the hope of redemption. There is light in the darkness. In the distance glows a flickering star, and it is drawing ever closer. Let us join together, dear friends, and follow that star to Bethlehem, where it shines ever so bri brilliantly on our Holy Mother and Christ Child. Amen. Or a path. To the coming of Jesus Christ and power and great glory, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the coming of wisdom to teach and guide us, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the coming of Emmanuel to help all the nations, Lord, hear us. For the church throughout the world and the faithful in every place, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Diane, our bishop, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, and all who minister in Christ, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those discerning a call to ordained ministry, especially David, Brian, and Richard, Lord, hear us. For the leaders of the nations and all in authority, especially Joseph, our president, and Michael, our governor, Lord, hear us. For justice, peace, and freedom among peoples of the earth, Lord, hear us. For travelers, for the sick and the suffering, for the hungry and the oppressed, and for those in prison, Lord, hear us. For all those who need healing, Lord, hear us. For all the faithful departed, Lord, hear us. Join your voices with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Luke, Blessed George, and all the saints. Let us offer ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. We pray to thee also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us. For we have sinned most grievously against thee. Passion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone and so uphold us by thy spirit, that we may live and serve thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord.
The peace of the Lord be always with you.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, because Thou didst send Thy beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we give thanks unto Thee for the goodness and love which Thou hast revealed unto us in creation, in the calling of Israel as Thine own people, in Thy word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Thy Son, Jesus Christ. For in the fullness of time, Thou didst send Him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him that was delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before thee. In him that was brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. For in a night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, 
We remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And according to his command, O Father, we offer unto thee the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, presenting unto thee from thy creation, O Lord of all, this bread and this cup. We beseech thee, gracious Father, to send the Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to thy Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. At the last day, put all things in subjection under thy Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Luke, blessed George, and all thy saints, we may enter into the everlasting heritage of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and thus assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thine everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech Thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with Thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Let us bless the Lord.